This sort of a conventional view of Lizzie Borden that a lot of fiction writers and, and filmmakers and documentary filmmakers take. They, of course, they focus more on the crime. And as I was looking at some of the pictures of her, the photographs and portraits she had taken as a teenager, there was, there's one where she's, she looks very cheery, very bright, very intelligent. And I, I kind of took the, uh, the feeling that was coming from that photograph and the characters started emerging. I wanted to do a very different Lizzie Borden. I wanted to do one who was a very, um, she's young, she's optimistic, she's full of energy, she's very bright, and she's kind of in love with life. And this is radically different from the Lizzie Borden that we usually think of. Now, it may turn out that the historical Lizzie Borden in 1875, who was going to high school, may have had some of those traits. Uh, there's a book coming out from the Historical Society called Parallel Lives, which explores that period of her life. And we're going to find out within a few months, like, just how much of that was really in her. But in my book, I wanted to do that radically different take on Lizzie. The book Lizzie Borden Girl Detective that I wrote is, consists of a sheer, series of short stories that uh, take place in the 1870s, around the time where Lizzie has just left high school. And it's a time of great optimism for her. Her father is doing very well with his business. She's um, now an independent woman, still living at home, but young enough to have optimism about her future. And she has an obsession with her own intelligence. So she uh, fancies herself a consulting detective, which back in 1875 was a relatively new concept. And she, um, goes out there promoting herself as such, building a relationship with the Fall River Police. She takes on many of the more unreputable characters in Fall River society, including uh, corrupted textile tycoons, fake spiritualists, and the sporting boys, who are uh, a, a, a class of young males who really come from wealthy families and or ne'er-do-wells and just hang around causing trouble and modeling themselves after street gangs even though they're not quite of that, of that uh, social element. And these are the characters that she takes on within the story. Uh, she's sort of uh, um, making up the profession as she goes along. And there's, there's plenty of literary allusions to Victorian literature, Victor Sherlock Holmes stories. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun and I think it's uh, of interest to people who are, uh, want to learn about Lizzie Borden, which is odd to say because the central concept is so unhistorical. However, it's against a tapestry of a very real historical Fall River. What I find uh, interesting about my book is that I, I, it doesn't deal with the crime. It has a very rich characterization of a fictional Lizzie without having to go near the crime.